Three, two, one. We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Grok Talk, brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your feared, extremist, right-wing, heart-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you could only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. Hey, welcome to Grok Talk. I'm Steve McDonald here with Mike Rogers and Skip Murphy. Thanks to Radical Moderate for calling in last segment to give us a piece of his mind. Uh, he's always doing that, and we love it. Um, and it, I don't mean that in a negative way. Anyway, uh, don't forget to check us out on Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and YouTube, and Ustream. Please visit us at granitegrok.com. And while you're at it, since you're already online, please go to cnht.org. Check out what they do, make a donation, help support them, and by extension, this program. Moving forward, uh, Wednesday we had a day. I don't know. I, I would You can't call it veto override day because there weren't any veto overrides, but the lovely and talented Susan Olson was there um, with a particular interest in SB 116, and we wanted to have a conversation with her about the events of the day, and so she has joined us. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Well, I'm, uh, I'm in recovery. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a hangover? I don't know if it's a hangar. I think it's more cooties than anything else. Aha. Uh-huh. So, um, with all those Democrats. Nope. Sorry. say that again. Hobnobbing with all those Democrats, eh? Indeed. Ick. 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 <laughs> all right. So, obviously, SB 116, you spent most of the year uh, working on this legislation, uh, promoting it, advancing it. Um, and, of course, Wednesday, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, partisan party lines in the Senate, they killed a veto override. Um, let's talk about it. What did you see? What ha- I mean, I don't know what there is to tell, but you were there. Well, yes, I was there, and, and yes. Actually, uh, we spent more than a year uh, on this bill. It wasn't just me. It was a bunch of terrific um, Second Amendment folks here uh, in New Hampshire. Not even just, you know, Second Amendment people. It's people who believe in, in fundamental freedoms and and things like that that apparently... Um, aren't so trendy anymore. <clears throat> so it was, it was yours truly, and and folks from Pro Gun New Hampshire and um, New Hampshire Farmers Coalition, gun owners of New Hampshire, and believe it or not, the Vermont gun owners have been wonderful supporters throughout the process. But yeah, we had uh, a bill introduced last summer that had been brought forward a couple of other times. Uh, under the guise then of what what people call constitutional carry, which actually is nothing more than a restoration of rights that New Hampshire uh, residents had 139 years ago. But people seem to have forgotten that. Um, We had a a, a great champion in the Senate uh, leading the fight on this bill, Jeb Bradley. I don't agree with Jeb on everything, but he... Um, stepped up to the plate and fought the fight and did a great job and said, you know what, we'll be back. But when we went through the Senate, I guess it was February, March, maybe, we came out of there with a 14 to 10 vote along straight party lines and went to the House and we won in the House, although not by a veto-proof margin, but being the, the sweet kind-hearted little old lady that I am, right, (laughs) and everyone knows me to be, I'm thinking, well, you know, um, the Senate Democrats showed their ignorance um, in, in voting against the bill in the Senate because they really didn't understand the history of the legislation. And, you know, New Hampshire doesn't have a, a big paid staff for its legislators to do homework or investigate or analyze or anything. So we thought, you know what, we're going to do that work for them. And what we turned up, as you guys well know, was that the New Hampshire's pistol law, which Senate Bill 116 sought not to eliminate but to modify, 
came about in 1923 when all the white guys in uh, uh, the legislature in Concord uh, demonstrated their ignorance and cowardice by passing legislation that uh, punished legal immigrants and, forgive me, union workers. The Amoskeg Mills had just come off of a nine-month-long strike um, for better wages and, and better hours, and uh, led by the United Textile Workers out of Massachusetts. Most of these people who'd gone on strike were um, legal immigrants, not illegal immigrants, people that had, in fact, been recruited to come in and, and work in the Amoskeg Mills, because I guess the white guys in Concord didn't want to do that work. So they brought in a bunch of uh, people from overseas. And <clears throat> after the strike, it was a nine-month strike, they, they lost. Um, but the fact remains that the guys in Concord thought, you know, wait a minute, we can't have all these foreigners, um, legal immigrants, walking around with unfettered rights. So they did two things. They enacted this New Hampshire so-called pistol license law, which bad forever um, foreign-born unnaturalized citizens from owning firearms outright. Not that they could go and get a license and possess one, but they, they couldn't own one, period. Put them in the same class as felons. Secondly, they decided they couldn't, well, knowing, knowing that they couldn't outlaw guns. They couldn't do it. Even this Democrat moron Governor Fred Brown realized he couldn't outlaw guns. He outlawed them for some people and for the rest of the folks in New Hampshire, the law-abiding uh, citizens of New Hampshire. He made it to where they had to go beg uh, their local police chief for a piece of paper and the local police chief's blessing that they were, in <coughs> fact, sufficiently suitable to own a firearm problem is they didn't define suitable. So it was in the eyes of Democrat Governor Fred Brown and all his white buddies in the legislature. Bad, bad idea. So we thought, okay, let's explain this to the New Hampshire Senate Democrats, because aren't Democrats the party of the people, of the minorities, of the unions, of the, the little guy? And one by one, we, we, we met with only a few of them, because most of them wouldn't talk to us. Certainly, uh, Haggy Masson, not the least of them, she absolutely refused to talk to us. But we went to senators that we thought, uh, by virtue of their records and their reputation, and my own personal knowledge as a recovering lobbyist, went to talk to them <laughs> to explain this to them. And we thought, you know what, now that you know this, you may not like the idea of firearms, but you have to take on board and take to heart the fact that your own party did this. So let's fix that. Well, we had hopes um, that there were a couple of senators, sensible senators on the Democrat side, that might go, all right, we'll hold our nose about the firearms, but we'll vote to do the right thing. And... The further this went, the longer this went. Um, I think, um, knowing that Haggy uh, intends to run for Senate, and that any dissension on the part of her minions, and this is a small M minion, this is not a big M minion, because I like big M minions. She and her minions, she wasn't going to brook any dissent. And so big bad Jeff Woodburn, the king of the North Country, uh, whipped his folks into shape, and we got a straight 14 to 10 vote out of the <laughs> Disappointing. Disappointing. But the worst part of it is, is the same guy that led the floor fight originally, Senator David Pierce from Hanover and Lyme and Enfield and all those snotty places up near Dartmouth, got up and... And this guy is alleged to be an attorney, right? I've never checked to see if he really got out of school or passed his bar exam. This guy who's alleged to be an attorney gets up and lies, all right? And, and he sees the camera out of the corner of his eye a couple of times, and I guess he, he blinked. But this guy stands up and says, that, you know what? 
why should firearms be treated any differently from any other constitutional right for which we must register? Did you know that Senator David Pierce believes that the right to vote is somewhere in the Bill of Rights? Oh, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Yeah, and he says constitutional carry, you know, it sounds good, it feels good, it looks good, but when you look under the hood, it's just, it's just misleading. And then he goes on to insult our neighbors uh, to the west in Vermont, saying that, you know, you hear all of this stuff that Vermont's the safest place in the country, um, and they don't have any gun laws at night. Well, he makes stuff up. This guy just makes stuff up. I guess thinking that people don't do their homework. Well, the guys from Vermont happen to be in the gallery. And the guys from Vermont happen to hear this moron. And I happen to send the video that we took of Senator Pierce to the guys in Vermont. So the fact that the license that was brought into to being by the original piece of legislation is still on the books, it's going to remain on the books, and that these guys think it's all about public safety is baloney. And anybody who believes differently uh, must be a Republican, because all the Senate Democrats went along with it, they went along with Maggie, and they poked their finger in the eye of every law-abiding New Hampshire citizen. So... Maybe I'm still a little raw after this, but you know what? I'm just going to rest up and go at it again. Well, good for you. And hooray for you. Uh, <laughs> do you. Do you want me to to uh, resurrect the uh, the Hassan and the Minions uh, picture for this? That'd be great. It's in That'd the li- it's, it's in the library if you want to just grab it for your post. Oh, I'll do that. And then we we need to start taking a hard look at Senator Pierce. You probably can't dislodge him from the ivory towers that are his district, but there are two senators. Old half baked Hosmer <laughs> from uh, Laconia. That would be mine. That would be yours. And big bad Jeff Woodburn, king of the North Country. Because, you know, I think an awful lot of folks in their districts kind of think that, that um, they have a right to. Uh, uh, to keep and bear arms, I notwithstanding bet. what Senator Pierce has to say. So, you know, we're just gonna we're just gonna take a break for a little bit, and then we're then we're gonna um, go back in and 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 work on these guys because we only needed two votes in the Senate. Hey, we're gonna take a break too, and you stay on the line, and we will be right back. We're talking to Susan Olson. This is Grok Talk. 